So the lion of the tribe of Judah. Now, when Jesus was here on earth and they tried to make him a king, and he said, no, I don't, I'm not, my kingdom is not here. But there's going to come a time when Jesus is going to come back, not as a baby, but as a king. And people that have been disobeying God, they're going to be sorry. Because he's not going to come back as a little baby. He's going to come back as a king with a whole lot of power. And the lion is going to roar. You ever hear a lion roar? Yeah. In person? Yeah. It's loud, isn't it? Yeah. It's seriously loud. It'll yeah. scare you. It'll scare you. If you. If you've ever been, like, for example, up to out of Africa, they got lions up there. And you might be standing with your back to the to the cage, and all of a sudden the lion roars. Like, whoa, whoa, whoa. When the lion roars, it means it. Standard. I've seen a lion have to roar. It didn't roar. Just didn't roar. But let me tell you something. When they roar, they mean business. Right? Seriously. All right, let's get into our lesson, though. Who knows? I'm going to say besides favor, because favor, I'm sure, knows the answer to this. I might even exclude Kaylee and Xander because I'm pretty sure they know the answer to this. Who knows what it means to pray? Who knows what it means to pray? Jason, talk to God. Talk to God. Any other ideas? Okay. Anybody else have their hands up? Favor, what were you going to say? You can tell them anything that's happened, Xander? You had something to say? No. No? I thought I saw a hand up back there, so. Was that yours, Kaylee? Yeah. Okay. I'll move on. You guys are all right. Every one of you are right. You're correct. Prayer is basically we're talking to God. Now, let me tell you what Jesus said. Because Jesus, in, in his Sermon on the Mount, he was talking about prayer. And here's what he said. He said, let me find it here. When you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites. You know what a hypocrite is? What's a hypocrite? It's a big animal in the zoo, right? Yeah. No, also, that's a hippopotamus. No, not really, really, but also that's a hippopotamus. A hippocrite is also a person who's like, oh, do this for me. Oh, do that for me. Yeah. Or they're like, um, oh, uh, they're like, oh, 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 they're like, Literally, the word hypocrite means an actor. In other words, a fake. Somebody who says that they're something and they're not. Somebody who acts like they're real spiritual and real pleasing to God and they're not. That's what a hypocrite means. Or if I were to say it, can I can I use the L word? Yeah. A hypocrite is a liar. They lie. They want to make you believe that there's something there's something really special, that there's someone really good. But they're lying. They're not. A hypocrite is somebody who pretends to be what they're not. It's a liar. Yeah, it's a liar. That's a hypocrite. That's what, So Jesus said, do not be like the hypocrites. So here's here's what they used to do. The people that were the they were the spiritual people, and they'd go out in front of everybody. Oh God! And they would cry out in public. Oh God! Hear my prayer. Oh God! Lord, I thank you for all the wonderful
wonderful things. And they wanted to make sure that everybody saw them praying. And then people would look at it and go, ooh, they must be real spiritual. Or as pastor would say, they're spiritual whooper whoppers. <laughs> That's the word he uses. He's a whooper whopper. Yeah, they're, they're real spiritual whooper whoppers. Look at them. Look at how they pray. Wow. Yeah. Jesus said, don't be like that. You see, remember last week we were talking about giving. And Jesus said, don't do it in public. Don't do it for show. Do it in secret so that God can bless you. And he says, when you pray, don't be like the hypocrites. They love to pray standing in the synagogues and at the corner of the streets so they may be seen by men. Truly, I tell you, they have their reward. Well, I did. They want everybody to see them. God says, don't be like, Jesus said, don't be like that. Because those people that's, that pray so everybody can see them, and everybody goes, ooh, they're real spiritual. That's, that's all the reward they get. That's all they get. God looks at them and says, whatever. If I was in their life, I would run away from them. Yep. See, if God were up there and he'd go, whatever. You think you're something big, but you're not. You're Jesus it. said, when you pray, go into your room, and when you've shut your door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Now Jesus also said, when you pray, don't use vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think they'll be heard from their many words. There was where I grew up. I grew up in New York. And where I grew up, there was a radio station. And every Saturday night, they would have this, it was a Christian radio station, and they would have this uh, Christian radio show. And the guy would get on there, it was a guy, and it was a bunch of women. And the guy would get on there, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among women, and blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. And then the women would respond, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, both now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And then the guy would say, Hail Mary, full of grace, blessed art thou among women, blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us both now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, for God, for the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou, and blessed be the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us both now and at the hour of our death. And they would go on for about 10 or 15 minutes just doing that. Hail Mary, full of grace. Holy Mary, Mother of God. Hail Mary. And that's all they say. That's all they say. And I would listen to it. And I think, enough. That's enough. Please. Ah, I can't take it. Because like I said, it's boring, right? It's annoying. It would get annoying. After about a minute or two of that, it would get really annoying. And I'm thinking, oh, God must think it's annoying too. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is thy womb, Jesus. Oh, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us, look down. That's what Jesus was talking about when he's talking about vain repetition. Because they would just repeat the same things over and over again. And then after a while, then they change. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will. And they weren't even, you know, they were just saying words. They acted like they were bored. They acted like they were bored. Can you imagine how God must have been bored? They acted like it didn't even mean anything to them. Every week, it was the same thing. They didn't change. You know, look, my lessons may not be exciting to every one of you guys, but you can say one thing. I don't come in and teach the same lesson week after week, week after week, week after week. It's a different lesson, right? This, this was the same thing week after week. And that is how a lot of people would pray. And Jesus said, don't 
do that. God doesn't hear you because of your going on for 15, 20 minutes and saying the same thing. God doesn't hear you. God is looking for you to talk to him out of your heart to say what you really mean. Yes. You do, and they did. Here's another one. You go up to your mom. 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 Okay, we had we had a girl who used to be in our church. She's she's a lot older now. But when she was about three, four years old, ma, 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 ma. And finally, if I were her mom, I'd go, what? five of us and we mom 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 and my mom would finally go what do you want what do you want not that she was mad at us and so it's not it's not that she was mad at us she was just irritated let me ask you this the more you say mom is your mom any more likely to listen to you? No. no. Until she finally gets annoyed. Yeah. But she's not any more likely to listen to you if you just go, mom, 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 mom. Cindy Noel did never do that to you, did she? Mom, 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 mom. Yeah. And finally, you doesn't make you listen to her more. You just, at one what point, you get annoyed. Want? What do you want? Go away. Right. It's not effective. Yep. And when we do that, when we do many words to God, all the words that we speak to God don't make our prayers more effective. Now, here's one that I, I always loved. When I was in college, and we get these guys who were, they were studying to be ministers. And they would get up to pray, Oh, Lord God of heaven and earth, Oh, Lord, ruler of the heavens and of the earth, you alone. It's, it's a lot of words. That's just one and, here's, and then they would use these fancy words, and they'd start to use words that rhyme. We had this one guy, he was a... He, he was what they call a dean. You know, he was in charge of some students. What a dean? That's, it's a guy in college, or a girl in college, uh, that's in charge of students. And he would use these expressions, and he would make his prayers rhyme. And oh, how beautiful those must have been. And I would listen to him, and I'd say, oh, how fake. Oh, how fake. God is not impressed. God is not fake. No, God is not fake. He's real. And God, God is not impressed with us being fake. God wants you to speak to Him just like you speak to your best friend. Except when I talk to my best friend, I say, dude, you're so ugly. No, don't say that to God. Don't say that to God. Dude, you're so ugly when you were born, the doctor slapped your mother. Dude, when you were born, you were so ugly, the doctor, they had to tie a bone around your neck to get the dog to play with you. Okay. I don't, I talk to my friends like that. I don't talk to God like that because I always have respect toward God. Now, there are people that, God, buddy, old friend, old pal. <laughs> Listen, God is my best friend. But he's, 
is also worthy of my respect. God is worthy of my respect. Even if you And he'll have to work that out because he's making a big mistake. Even though, even though you're gonna, God is still your father. Okay, now here's what Jesus said. In this manner, therefore, pray. Now, God didn't. Jesus was not saying use these words because a lot of people they they just pray, they just read these words and think I'm praying to God. He says, "Our Father in heaven, hallowed or holy be your name." Your kingdom come, your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now some people think that when we pray, we've got to say those words every time. But that's not so. That's not so. First of all, our Father in heaven, holy is your name. He's, you're acknowledging that God is a holy God and He's worthy of all of your respect. Your kingdom come, your will be done. In other words, Lord, let me obey you. Give us this day our daily bread. We go to God with needs. Listen, sometimes we go to God in prayer and all we do is we tell Him our needs. Have you ever known anybody that every time you see them, they tell you something that they need and they want you to do, and every time you see them, they're telling you something they want you to do for them? Yeah. What happens? Pretty soon, you start to avoid them, right? You see them coming, and you quickly go the other way so they're not going to see you and constantly ask you for things. Now, God doesn't do that, but I'm sure He feels like doing that sometimes. Our prayers to God should be more than just ask, God, give me, 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 give me. That's not our prayer. Yes, if we have need, we need to ask God to give us what we need. Not necessarily what we want. Because I can sit there and I can say, Lord, you know, one of them old 1964 Mustang would be really nice to have. Like a convertible. Or even the what I used to have, a, I had a 1992 Mustang convertible. Lord, I'd love to have that back. It's a car, Ford Mustang. And it goes really, really fast. The one I had did. Oh, you like this? Mm hmm. You like this? Faster. Let's see. God, look. You ever ask your parents for ice cream? Yeah. And they give it to you? Yeah. Sometimes they do. Usually they don't because they know what you need. But sometimes they give it to you because they know what you want. Guys, you need to sit up, please. I do that with Elizabeth. If 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 I gave her what she asked before, we would have ice cream every day because Elizabeth loves ice cream. But I know that ice cream every day is not good for her. It's not good for me. It's not good for Miss Faith. And so sometimes I say no. Sometimes when we ask God for what things we want, He's going to say no. And it's okay. And it's okay. But sometimes God will give you the things that you want. But God is more focused on giving you the things that you need. God's more interested in what you need. So when we say, give us this day our daily bread, do you need to eat every day? No. You do, actually. <laughs> Otherwise, you're going to be pretty, pretty well, hungry. Be fast. You're not, you're not going to die if you don't eat in a day, but it's better for you if you eat every day. It's more healthy if you eat every day. All right, last thing it says, he said, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Do you know what that means? 
I mean sin. When we talk, the Bible talks about debts, it's talking about sin. Everybody sins. Everybody sins. Even babies? Even babies. You when they're born, everybody sins. Don't they kick their mom's stomach? Yeah, don't they? Yeah. Don't they? That's not a sin. That's just, they don't mean to do it. But a baby is only interested in what they want. Yeah. And if a baby doesn't get what they want, they scream. Here's the thing, you guys. Everybody is going to do something to you that you don't like. Everybody is going to do something wrong to you. And guess what else? You do wrong things to everybody else too. You do things to other people that they don't like. Jesus told us that we are to forgive each other. Not hold it against each other, but forgive each other. If you want God to forgive you, then you need to forgive others. And that's what he's saying here. He says, if you forgive men, and it says men here, but it's talking about everybody, men, women, children. If you forgive men their trespasses or their sins, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive, then your Father will not forgive you. Hands up if this is true. Who sins? No, I'm holy. <gasps> Hands up if this is true. Put them down. Hands up if this is true. Who needs God to forgive them of their sins? <laughs> if you will forgive other people of their sins against you, God will forgive you your sins against them. And God will hear your prayers. If you do not forgive people their sins, God cannot forgive you. And he will not hear your prayers. He will not answer your prayers. That's the big thing. Listen, every one of you guys can pray. It doesn't have to be a long thing. But talk to God. Every day, talk to him. Talk to God every day. And you're going to find... As you begin to talk to God, you're going to find that you feel deep down inside that God's talking back to you. If you communicate with God, He will communicate with you. And none of you are too young for that. Alright, I want everybody to bow your heads and close your eyes. Father, we thank You for this time. We thank You for Your Word. We thank You for Your many blessings. Lord, we thank You because You hear our prayers. And I ask you that you would help us that we forgive others their sins against us so that you can forgive our sins and so that you will hear our prayers. Father, I ask you to put a desire in every child here that they would reach out to you every day and that they would speak to you, that they would talk to you. Lord, that you would make yourself real to every one of them. That you would open up a life that they've never known. That they would know you throughout their whole lives. Now I pray a blessing on every one of them. Every child here, Lord, I pray a blessing upon in Jesus' name. Amen.